I've decided to build a sculling oar, also known as the wooden engine. Uh, now I did uh, consider making sweep oars, uh, one on either side, uh, and those could have been easily used by just installing a uh, oar lock here on the combing or uh, fashioning some sort of sleeve device over the spinnaker winches, which, which would have been easily done. Uh, but with a, with a sculling oar, um, well, with, with sweep oars, you get a bit more power, but with a sculling oar, it's, it's a little bit more efficient, a little less tiring. Um, and then there's the situation in a marina where, where things can be quite narrow. Uh, so, so it gives you a bit more space. Uh, think like a gondola in Venice going down those narrow canals. Uh, a, a sculling oar makes sense, and it's probably the best possible choice for that. And to determine the actual length of the oar, um, I stood up up top on the seats, not on the cockpit floor, and measured from, I measured a, a 40 degree angle coming down to the waterline, uh, all the way up to where my chest would be when I'm standing. And then uh, that would be the length of the handle with a little bit of the blade sticking out. So three quarters of the blade should be on the water. And then I did the math. Uh, for the blade and I determined uh, 13 feet 3 inches. Uh, the freeboard here is actually quite low. It's only 27 inches so 13 feet sounds about right. So normally you would take a, a 2 by 6 board, a very long one, and cut out the basic shape of the oar um, and then do a bit of carving to round off the handle, uh, of course thin out the blade. Um, but I've decided to do something a little bit different. Um, for one, I, I wanted to break down, um, preferably into three sections. Uh, but also, uh, I think I, I found a way to save myself quite a bit of labor in making this. And that is to use a, or a set of uh, two inch diameter dowels. These are about 48 inches long each. Uh, altogether, that's only 12 feet, so I'll be adding uh, another foot or so with the blade and uh, maybe a, a small handle. So normally um, you would take uh, uh, the long one piece or and attach it to your lifelines and stanchions all the way up to the, the pulpit at the front of the boat. Uh, but in this case, I'll be able to break it down and put it inside. And in order to join the sections together, what I had originally planned was to just get a uh, two inch diameter stainless steel pipe and just create sleeves um, at the joints and then just find a way of uh, fixing that in um, when needed. However, um, I do have a set of these breakdown oars. These are about six feet. Um, and this section, there's actually a little button on the back side here that you push and it separates and there's two there's a sleeve inside and there's a sleeve on the outer. Um, and I realized that after sanding these down a bit, these are actually made of brass. They're just chrome plated brass. So um, if I do install these, I'll sand them down and lacquer them to make them look nice. Okay, getting started. So I'm starting with the blade section of the oar. Uh, I have a few uh, scrap two by fours that I'm going to cut up. It's probably more than I need, but I'll see which one has the least knots. First, I've cut the first dowel uh, to be able to fit the blade, which will be made from those. Uh, so I just took off a quarter inch off each side and that leaves an uh, inch and a half face uh, that matches the uh, width of the two by fours. Uh, and this would have been much easier if I had a better quality table saw, but uh, I did what I could and then just finish with a handsaw. And now I've got the two by fours cut up to form what will be the blade. So piece on each side, that's two inches and two inches, plus the middle piece is inch and a half, so five and a half inch wide blade, and then uh, a small piece here to extend it in the middle. Next, I've epoxied all of the pieces together using thickened epoxy. Next, I've done some basic shaping, uh, just to uh, put a diagonal here, cut off the extra beveled edges, 
and this tape marks where the sleeve will go so i'm not going to go past that when i uh, cut this down cutting on a table saw i uh tapered down the blade down to about a half inch there and all the way up to here it looks very rough uh, obviously made a lot of wrong cuts with this old table saw which is terrible but i got it done uh, so i just need to make that look a little better and to make it look better um, and address what was uh, pretty much a hack job <laughs> i've uh, sanded it down um used a little bit of uh, thickened epoxy uh, i did run out of the the west systems uh, silica for thickening so in these dark areas i used um, some sawdust and that, that did actually work pretty good uh, i'm not going to do anything crazy like uh, cover it with fiberglass because this is plenty strong um, and you can see the taper here um, and up there by the bottom of the shaft how it kind of tapers so next will be to work on getting the sleeves mounted, which are removed from these other oars. Um, however, this is a little bit uh, too thick, so I'm going to have to figure out a way to shave this down. I was able to recess that uh, using the palm sander and then going over it with, uh, back and forth with a strip of sandpaper uh, just to recess it enough to get this thing on there. So now I need to kind of put a little uh, trench in here uh, to clear that little spring-loaded button. Okay, I was able to get that little trench dug out. All I did was just use a rasp on a drill. Um, and this is the, the bottom fitting, which does slide on there now. Put this with one hand. Uh, and it fits good. And the button now functions, it springs back because of that little space under there. So that's the only one I'm going to show on video. I'll do the other three off camera. Um, and then I'll also probably sand off this uh, chrome plating to expose the brass underneath. And now with that completed and all of the sections fitted together, um, I was able to get a more realistic measure measurement off the... Uh, the stern and found that my measurement of uh, 13 feet 3 inches was actually a bit long so what I have here is approximately 12 feet 7 inches and even that may be a little bit long um, I was going to extend the shaft but uh, obviously that's no longer necessary so I just rounded off uh, what I have here um, I'm gonna go with that for now and next I'll have to do some finishing. And I finished it with a few coats of some topside paint. Also, I coated the brass fittings with um, this special lacquer, which actually has some anti-tarnishing compound in it. Um, and I have used that with success uh, on some of the brass uh, instruments and such that I have inside the cabin. And now I need to set up an oar lock here on the stern. So I do have uh, the receiver end of the oar lock. I'm going to mount it uh, somewhere here and I'll probably use this uh, a little piece of this scrap teak that I have. Also I have two different oar locks. Uh, I think this is brass, I'm not sure. Uh, but in either case, they're they're not wide enough to accept the wooden part of the oar. Um, they'll probably go over the the brass uh, part where they join together. Uh, but I'll figure that out as I go along. And now I've mounted that teak block by through bolting it to the tow rail or through the tow rail uh, and through the fiberglass. Um, and I mounted the receiver into the oar lock by screwing it into the teak block. I did end up using the brass oar lock. I simply cut it open uh, from the top, shaped it, and then this nice U shape is the result. Um, I tried to uh, bend open the chrome one, but it snapped on me as soon as I tried. Um, and also I, I drilled a hole here in the bottom and put a split pin in there to keep it from going anywhere. So the only thing left 
that any, that needs to be done here is to just give this a little bit of varnish. And now the moment of truth. So I need to wrap a piece of leather around the ore shaft. And this is all I have, which is just too small. So for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna leave that part out. Um, I drilled a hole here for the so-called oriental lanyard. It's just uh, tied to a snap hook, which goes on one of my uh, clip-in pad eyes. And the basic motion is to uh, turn this as you're moving it. So the bottom part of the blade is always going forward like that. And that's it. So um, having a breakup sculling ore is obviously advantageous because you can break it up and store it in various places like uh, the side deck, the, the V-berth, even in the bilge if I wanted to. But I could also leave it assembled and uh, stored up front on the stanchions. Um, if I find those brass uh, fittings, those sleeves uh, aren't holding very well, I can always just put a couple of screws in and take them in and out as needed. Um, and I should also uh, mention that uh, I have had some limited success sculling the boat just by using the, the tiller on the rudder. Um, but that, that only works so much. Uh, I mean, I, using a sculling oar is, is much more effective. Um, and that's the reason I built one in the first place.